Back about a year ago, I compared a Core 2 Quad 9550 against an i5-750S. Now, a couple people have commented that I should have used a QX9650 Extreme instead, as it had a higher clock speed and it made up for the turbo speed of the 750S. And I agree. The problem was that the QX9650 was, at the time, still a bit pricey for my taste. But recently, well... I got one. So let's do a quick test and see how it does. Now the quad is clocked at 3 gigahertz while the i5 is at 2.4, but will turbo up to 3.2 gigahertz depending on its load. And the i5, well, is a newer and more advanced CPU with many more instruction sets as you can see here. Now the point of the original video was to see if it would have been worth upgrading back then. Many of us didn't because we felt the new line just wasn't worth it. For these tests, I use the same GPU, memory, and Windows image. First off, pass mark, and right off the bat, the quad is already showing what a great CPU it was. Yes, it used more power and it ran a bit hotter, but it held its own in performance. That is until we get to the memory test, and you can see that the i5 had a far more advanced and efficient bus, and it's shown here by beating the quad by about 400 points. And that's again shown here with a quick 7-zip test. The i5 finishes 25 seconds sooner and had an average compression rate roughly 1 meg per second faster. Now Cinebench single core test showed where the i5 shines. It will turbo the highest only during single threaded loads and it shows that here in Cinebench's single threaded run where it finished nearly 2 minutes before the quad. However, in the multi threaded run, the quad, well it finished nearly a minute and a half sooner. In handbrake, it was more the same. The quad encoded on average one FPS faster and finished almost a minute and a half sooner as well. Now you might be saying, okay, whatever, so it's only a minute, who cares? But remember, this CPU was older technology that was released a little over two years before the 750S. Now this test is a 1080 60 FPS video playing on YouTube with hardware acceleration disabled. And as you can see, both CPUs do just fine. Now the quad has a few drop frames here and there, but for the most part, it plays back perfectly fine. Now let's see how they do in games and 3D benchmarks. In Heaven, you can see that the i5 pulled ahead, but only slightly. Really, they look like they're being bottlenecked by the GPU. I ran this test again with an Ivy Bridge CPU using the same settings and got over double the average FPS. So the bottleneck, I'm guessing, is the board or the PCI bus. In superposition, the i5 again pulled ahead, but only averaged about 10 FPS faster. In Unreal Tournament 3, the i5 again pulled ahead, but only by around 15 FPS. Fallout New Vegas was released in 2010, right around the time of this i5. It, however, averaged about the same frame rate as this quad, with the i5 scoring about half an FPS higher. And crypto, do verify your suit is working under Earth's atmospheric conditions. Get a move on! Destroy All Humans was originally released in 2005, with this PC version being released in 2020. Both CPUs played it fine. Now, even though the i5 averaged about 2 FPS higher, it actually felt better to play on the quad. The levels took a little bit longer to load, but once loaded, the controls were far more responsive. GTA San Andreas was released in 2005 before either of these CPUs were released, but let's see how they do. Well, surprisingly, the i5 actually averaged about 15 FPS higher on average, but it felt about the same play on each. Okay, let's step it up a notch and try out GTA 4. Now this game was an absolute beast at the time to run, and you needed high-end hardware just to, to run it well. But as you can see here, both did pretty well. with the i5 scoring about 10 FPS that. higher on average. Get out of the way. In GTA 5, both played fine. Now each CPU is pushed to its limits, but the game was still perfectly playable. The i5 averaged about 15 FPS higher. Now the quad comes alive when you overclock it. Uh, we'll take a look at that next, but first I'll let the last part of the benchmark run if you, know, you want to see it.
Okay, so the board I'm using to run the Core 2 Quad 9650 uses the G41 Express chipset, which is not known for being a great overclocker. I was, however, able to clock the 9650 up to 3.7 gigahertz, and as you'll see, that makes a pretty substantial difference. With a decent motherboard, this CPU can easily be clocked to 4 gigahertz or above, but let's see what 3.7 gets us. In a Cinebench Solar run, the Quad now finishes first, 5 minutes sooner than its stock run, and 3 minutes faster than the i5. In the multi-core run, it again finishes first, about one and a half minutes before its stock run and nearly three minutes sooner than the i5. In handbrake, same deal. The overclocked quad averaged about five to six FPS faster than the other runs and also finished about five to six minutes faster. Now, if we take a look at all the results, you can see that the quad really comes alive once overclocked. And this is why many of us never bothered to upgrade until the Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge days. And you could see how much of a performance improvement the Ivy Bridge CPU did in comparison to the first Gen i5 or Quad 9650. At the time before that, it usually just wasn't worth it. In games, well, you could see the i5 pulled ahead a little bit, but once overclocked, the quad was right there alongside of it or faster. But in all cases, the Ivy Bridge i5 smoked either of these. Well, that was a quick video, but I wanted to get this out there. Now, if you'd like, I can include the CPU in other videos, maybe overclock it further and see what we can get out of it. Um, but until next time, let me know and uh, have a good one. Bye-bye.